All right, let's start with the lab leak story. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a story that the Wall Street Journal two days ago, or three days ago now. It's hard for me to keep track while I travel. But uh, uh, the Wall Street Journal broke a story that says the Department of Energy in the United States government, I guess the Department of Energy has its own uh, intelligence agencies. It's a little spooky how many different intelligence agencies there are in the United States and how little I think they still talk to each other. I don't, that was one, supposedly one of the lessons learned from 9-11, but I don't think it was actually learned. Anyway, uh, uh, the story is that uh, uh, the, uh, the Department of Energy in the United States has come to the conclusion that it is likely, although not certain, but likely, that COVID uh, was a result of a lab leak, not a purposeful lab leak, but an accidental lab leak at the Wuhan uh, research facility. Uh, now, uh, of course, this shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. If, if uh, I talked about this on the show many times uh, during COVID, and then I actually had Matt Ridley on the show to discuss uh, the lab leak theory when he published a book about it. Uh, I had read the book, and the book, I, th I thought, made a very credible case for the lab leak as being more likely than the virus coming about naturally and spreading through the market. Uh, I thought that, uh, um, you know, Ridley and, and Julie Chen, I think her name is, Julie or, anyway, Chen, Dr. Ch a postgraduate, uh, uh, Chen, who he worked with, uh, made a compelling case that it was lab leak. I think some of the intelligence agencies in the United States are coming to the same conclusion. Of course, China continues to deny it. Uh, other intelligence agencies in the United States are still claiming it was natural. I suspect that there are people in the U.S. who know the people in the U.S. who, who are helping fund some of this research. Uh, I mean, the research in and of itself uh, is probably not research that we should say, um, uh, you know, fundamentally should be banned. It, it, but uh, the research was being done in, uh, in laboratories that were not at the highest security category, certainly not at the, at the security category that would be justified for a, uh, a virus that could affect human beings the way COVID did. So it's probably that one of the, uh, during the research, one of the researchers got COVID, went to the market, and the rest of history, probably in October and November of 2019. Um, so um, this, part of this story, though, is kind of a story that repeats itself during COVID and is generally a story, and that is that some people um, in, in the administration and then some people in the mainstream media decided that the lab leak story was some kind of conspiracy theory. I never thought it was. I thought the idea that Russia did it, that China did it on purpose was a conspiracy theory and, and didn't make any sense. But uh, some, pe some people thought that the lab leak theory was a conspiracy theory. Uh, they, uh, and therefore, they, a lot of publications, a lot of scientific publications, and certainly in the mainstream media, poo-pooed it, ridiculed it, shut it down, uh, prohibited people from talking about it, uh, and, and really did a lot of damage to the cause of journalism and, uh, and the cause of, of a free press. Uh, so uh, there was a real attempt to, to, to shut this story down and to silence the story. Uh, in spite of that, and, and, and this is the good news, in spite of that, uh, there were people talking about it, researching it, uh, describing it, and then there was a, a breakthrough story in, in, I think, the New Yorker, of all places, the New Yorker, that basically laid down the whole lab leak theory and, and it kind of gave it credibility. And, and at some point, kind of the, the dam burst and... Uh, and, and many more people came on board uh, on this. But, uh, and of course, Matt Ridley's book uh, was, a, was a defining moment. So I think that the lab leak theory really was never a conspiracy theory. It was, it was being uh, suggested by incredibly thoughtful scientists and, uh, and journalists. And, and, and um, it, it didn't look like the kind of a theory that you could dismiss offhand, uh, even very early on. It, it, it was, nobody knew, and, and the fact is nobody still knows exactly, um, exactly uh, what, uh, what caused or, or what, what started COVID. But uh, 
I, you know, I don't know who exactly in the energy department. I don't know why the energy department is even investigating this. I'm not even sure why an energy department even exists, why we need an energy department. So, but, you know, somebody at the energy department who supposedly is qualified to do these things um, uh, has uh, this report. Uh, again, this is a secret report, so the Wall Street Journal got access to it. Uh, and, and they are conflicting views within the Biden administration with regard to whether lab leak is legit or not. But again, uh, as I said, Matt Ridley book seemed pretty persuasive. I think since the Ridley book was published, there's been a lot more evidence to suggest that the lab leak is likely, although there was some, uh, you know, some people who countered it with some things that, that, that suggested it could be natural uh, after all. Uh, so... I, I don't know that we'll ever know for sure, but a little bit more evidence. And again, uh, part of the issue is here how our media and how the authorities dealt with these things and uh, what happens when you, when, you, when you silence and when you uh, uh, don't allow these things to, and, and we know this from Twitter and we know this from elsewhere, you don't allow honest debate and discussion. Um, and uh, particularly on issues that nobody is really sure. I don't think anybody can say with, um, with uh, what do you call it, with certainty uh, what exactly happened. Um, all right, let's see. So that is the lab theory, uh, story. ChatGPT, I mean, there's a bunch of stories related to ChatGPT. Let me, let me see if I can... Oh, uh, let me just, one second. Um, oh, so you asked who, somebody in the chat asked who uh, the Department of Energy was. So it turns out that the Department of Energy manages labs around the country and the world uh, and reportedly has new evidence um, about this. So they, they have some expertise in, uh, in this. Um, and, uh, you know, some people are arguing that, some people are arguing that uh, this is just another attempt by the Biden administration or by elements within the Biden administration to drive tensions with China even higher, even worse, and to drive us, uh, you know, so who knows? But uh, suddenly um, this, uh, this came out. I'm trying to look just quickly when the New York uh, Magazine. The New York Magazine article is in early 2021. So this is relatively early on. Um, they, they had a 12,000 word piece on a lab leak um, in October 2021. In October 2021, that was early 2021. The FBI came out and, and, and said, um, um, you know, there's some suspicion that it is a lab leak. And by December 2021, according to polls, 70% of Americans believed that COVID came from a lab. So anyway, um, that, is, um, that is where we are. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Your Own Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.